Hi everybody, Mary here from A Recreated Life and today I'm hopping on to show you guys what I've done uh, for my garden this year. I am so, so, so excited for my garden this year. I've really kind of expanded it, made it a lot bigger than what it has been and I am determined to attack the weeds with a vengeance this year. So I've got a few things planned for my garden and I really wanted to share it with you guys. So. Um, what I did was I actually work um, for this company right here. I work uh, just temporarily for a seasonal job for this company. It's called Johnny Selected Seeds. And they are um, a seed company here in Maine. They've been around since, so oh, probably the 1980s. And they are actually an employee-owned company. Well, anyway, um, because I'm there this year, I get an employee discount on my, my seeds. And so I've kind of gone hog wild with my seeds. And... Uh, and um, I've got a lot more things this year than I normally get, but I am so excited. Now, um, I g ordered these seeds already, and then I went through them yesterday while I, well, yesterday or, and today while I was doing up my, my garden plan, and I realized a few more things that I still need to get, so, um, so I'm planning on putting in another order this week. But anyway, I wanted to show you guys what I've done. All I did was, I basically drew... Um, I, I, it's not on graph paper, I just literally did it on printer paper, um, just a rectangle and I don't have measurements on here so in all honesty I don't know how this is going to work because I'm not sure um, if my seeds will go, like, like see I've got two rows of corn here, I'm not really sure I've got seeds enough to go two full rows of corn so this is going to be a kind of play it by ear thing. Um, but anyway, I just, I got it down on paper and I used, um, I knew what I had for seeds. I know what I want this year to plant for veggies, what I want to can, what I want to freeze and approximately how much I want to get. But some of the things are new and I've never grown before. So I really don't know how much to get. I'm just guessing. But, um, I used this book right here. My sister let me borrow it. And this is a book about companion, companion planting. And so what this means by companion planting, what I mean by that is you want to try to plant seeds next to, uh, plant certain things next to other things that are beneficial for each other. Um, like there are certain plants that do well with each other and there are certain plants that don't do well together. This book tells you about that. So what I basically did was I went through my pile of seeds and I went through this book. I looked at like, say for instance, I had corn. I went to the section on corn and I could clearly see what, you know, what, uh, what benefits corn to grow next to it and what uh, hurts it. Um, so it said melon, squash, pumpkins, things like that. Um, you know, do see, melon, squash, pumpkins, and cucumbers like the shade provided. They like the shade provided by the corn, so they do well with corn. And the Native Americans used to do that all the time. They planted squash and pumpkins within the corn. Um, so what I decided I was going to do is I, I'm going to plant my my corn. Now I've got two rows of corn here, but there's something about corn, and I'll have to talk to my sister about it when I get ready to plant. I think it might benefit by more rows, um, you know, for something about germination of it, like I might need to have four rows instead of two. If that's the case, I'm going to cut the rows in half and I'll do four half rows of corn and then the other halves of, the, of each one of those rows, I will do my squash and pumpkin and things like that. So basically that's all I did. I went through the book and I checked to see what did well together and what didn't. So um, what I've done is, I cannot wait for this, I've got sunflowers this year because I like I, I've told you guys before that I'm in this apartment where I have big huge windows and I really have wanted to get some bird feeders outside. Well I finally found, they're called shepherd hooks and they basically look like a shepherd hook, you know the old fashioned shepherd, you know the hooks that shepherds used to walk around with in the fields and you hang plants off them. So I've got two of those. The ground's still frozen here in Maine, so I can't put them up, but I am planting, at the end of each row, I'm gonna plant a sunflower, or some sunflowers, and I'm going to, I got this tip from somebody at work. Somebody called in, and one of the farmers at work called in to order seeds, and she told me that she plants um, cucumbers underneath each one of her sunflowers and you use the cucumber, the uh, sunflower, you wind the cucumber around the sunflower as it's growing and that's, you know, it benefits, they benefit each other. And I did actually find 
in this book that cucumbers and sunflowers go well together. They kind of like sweeten the taste of each other. And that lady told me that too. So anyway, that's what I thought I would do at the ends of each row. The only one I did, I've got just a sunflower at the end of my potato row because cucumbers and potatoes don't do well together. Um, so anyway, sunflowers at the end of each row with cukes growing up. So that should give me plenty of sunflower seeds for my, for my birdhouses. And it should also give me enough cucumbers to, to not only eat, but to also can. I'm going to make some pickles this year. Also, too, I found out, my sister told me, and my, my book mentioned that, too, that marigolds, tomatoes actually do well with marigolds. Marigolds stink to certain kinds of to bugs that harm tomatoes, and so they won't go near them if you plant tomatoes. I also found out that mint and basil... Um, they all, but mint, basil, and tomatoes benefit one another. So I put, I'm only going to have one tomato plant this year. One tomato bush is plenty for me. So I've got um, the marigolds on the end of the row. Then I'm going to plant mint. Then I'm going to plant my one tomato bush. And then basil on the other side of it. Um, I do like to have quite a few green pepper plants. Usually about a dozen. I use a lot of green pepper in cooking. So I grow... Um, I usually like to have a dozen uh, green pepper bushes and I cut them up and keep them frozen in my freezer all winter. I'm also going to have one entire row of onions. Um, that's going to be about, I, I order my onions not by seeds but by what you call a set. An onion set, if you get a, a whole pack of onions, you can buy them in like 50 or 100 things. And they're only about that big. They look like a baby onion, basically, and you plant those in the ground. And that's how I'm going to plant my onions. Um, we don't really have a long enough growing season here in Maine to um, start your onions from seeds. At least, I don't think so, anyway. So... Uh, so that's what I've done. Onions in this first row, my mint tomatoes, basil, and then green peppers in the rest of that row. I'm going to do a half a row of carrots and a half a row of lettuce. Now those two do well together. Then I'm going to plant, I have cilantro, oregano, and stevia. That leaves a whole half a row left here. Um, if my potatoes, how did I figure that? I've got that one row of potatoes. I'm doing... You, uh, I've got five pounds of Yukon Gold to plant and one pound of fingerling potatoes. They were wicked expensive this year. Even working at that place, it was, it was expensive. So if I need more, I planted five pounds of Yukon Golds last year and I loved it. And I may need that whole row, maybe even more. If so, I'll put the overflow in the row with my, my herbs. Um, now the row of the squash I'm going to plant... Nasturtiums apparently do well with squash and pumpkins. So I'm going to do squash, nasturtiums, pumpkin, nasturtiums, then melon, and morning glories go well together. So then I'm going to plant my melon and then some morning glories. Now they'll all do well next to the corn, and I'm thinking they're all going to just kind of flow over. The, the, uh, the, all of these here, the melon, the squash, the pumpkin, those are all real viney things, and they do well in the corn because they, they like the shade that the corn provides to them. So anyway, that's my garden this year. Now, another thing I wanted to show you. This, so this book was fantastic. Loved it. It was uh, really helpful. But if you don't have a book, you can always go online. Just go online. There were a few things that weren't in the book, and I just Googled it. I went online and Googled whatever it was. Now, this book is so cool. The name of it is Pantyhose, Hot Peppers, Tea Bags, and More for the Garden. A thousand and one ingenious ways to use common household items to control weeds, beat pests, cook compost, solve problems, make tricky jobs easy, and save time. Um, there was a library near me that was having a book sale, and I got this for a buck. Definitely worth that. This has got a lot of great tips in it. One of the tips that it gave me was I bought these garden markers and they're kind of pretty flimsy wood um, and I just wrote on them with a with a um, uh, what do you call it a sharpie marker and that book there gave me the tip to um, put nail polish on them so that because they're kind of they, they aren't going to last probably not through two years they're really kind of flimsy wood so put nail polish on them so that's what I did I bought a, a bottle of nail polish at the Dollar Tree and uh I put nail polish on them, so I'm hoping that that will make them last a little bit longer. I also, this year, to combat the weeds, as I've said, um, I bought some of that black plastic, they call it mulch, um, plastic, mulching plastic, 
and that I'm gonna put in between the rows so that I don't I have fewer weeds I'm telling you oh the weeds have been those um, the weeds have been such a nightmare and the potato bugs and I think that I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and go to my garden more frequently you guys know I live in you know in, in town and I don't have space you know right outside my door where I can have a garden but I have a sister that lives quite a few miles away she lives about 12 miles away from me so if I take a trip there every day that's 25 miles I'm putting on my car every day so anyway I think I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and do it and this is a little list I made up while I was going through of more things I need to get uh, so when I go back to work on Wednesday I will um, order the rest of the things that I need I forgot my carrots I realize I don't have enough corn so I'm gonna do that my lettuce. I didn't get any lettuce the first time, but I thought, you know what, if I'm going to be out there more often and more frequently, you know, I really have loved having my arrow garden and that lettuce right here available to me. So I think I might really enjoy it. Um, I also want to get some zucchini this year. I want to try doing, usually what I do is I grow zucchini and I shred it and put it in the freezer for zucchini bread. I'm kind of getting out of the zucchini bread thing, but I would not mind at all slicing them and cooking them that way and um, so that's what I'm gonna do it to slice and eat but anyway I've gotten all these fantastic teeth now the marigolds I just I just picked up a cheapy packet at Walmart because I don't care I mean the seeds here are very expensive and I don't care if they're organic or not but anyway this company has a really great um, website you should check it out um, if you guys are thinking about growing gardens and you don't know anything about it go to the growers library there there are so much <clears throat> information about how to grow stuff and how to use their tools and they have some really awesome tools this year I am giving stevia a try um, I think I mentioned in a few of my cooking videos that I like to use a sugar by the name of Truvia and it's a combination it's half stevia half sugar so it cuts back on your sugar usage that's why I started using it and I really like it so I thought but she is I'm gonna try some stevia I am also going to try <clears throat> excuse me I'm also gonna try mint and so I want to dry the two of them and I thought well gee that would make a great little tea combination the stevia and the mint together so I'm gonna give that a try and uh, so anyway you guys that's my garden plan for the year I am so very 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 excited I cannot wait um, having this job at the seed company has really um, you know, I've just learned so, so much. I can't wait to put it all into practice. So I'm really, really excited to have my garden. And I'm going to do a lot more videos on gardening. You know, I just want to say here at this point, as I'm finishing up my video, that, you know, we've got a, this, I'm doing this video on March 16th, 2020. And, um, here in the United States, we've just, uh, gotten the, the coronavirus thing has uh, kind of hit us and a lot of companies are clo you know uh, stopping you know schools have all closed for two weeks a lot of the companies in Maine have stopped for two weeks mine hasn't said anything yet so I'm still planning on reporting to work but um, you know people are hoarding things in the grocery store and you know I um, you know if we do these things and you've heard me talk about it many times how many times have you guys seen me cook with things that I've grown out of my garden I mean you know I've already <clears throat> started and I didn't uh, you know I decided to do way more a bigger garden this year way before the coronavirus hit you know I decided I was at this company and it makes me really excited about growing stuff and you know I do all that stuff because I'm frugal you know I you guys have if you have followed my channel for a while you know how frugal I am and and having a garden is just a frugal thing and you know watching everybody you know go crazy hoarding things at the grocery store I don't really have to do that because I have a garden and I have freezers full of stuff and you know I buy things cheaply when they are on sale and keep them in my freezer and I put all my garden supply in my freezer or I do canning and you know things like that so you know it's kind of um, not I, I would say it's not making me as fearful as other people because I know I have all these backups and these things um, so I'm really really lucky in that I have a son that gives me meat and you know I, I have my little arrow garden I have my garden a si sister a family member that lets me have garden space so I'm really really lucky in that way <clears throat> excuse me I know a lot of people aren't but 
you know, there's a lot you can do at your little, you know, maybe you live in an apartment in, in town or in a city like I do. There's a lot that you can do um, here. You can do a compost thing and make your own, you know, soil and you can plant little window boxes on the inside of your apartment and, and windows and, you know, grow things on your windowsill. So you can always grow lettuce or, you know, things like that. At least you'll have greens. Uh, so, you know, I just, I hope everybody isn't panicking out there. You know, I... I know there it's a big joke around here that everybody in the United States seems to be going crazy buying toilet paper. Well, you know, I buy toilet paper by the case all the time. I've done videos on my thrifty videos in the past and and I just always have a case of toilet paper around. That's just kind of how I do things. So, you know, as you can see, by simply being frugal and living life like our grandparents always used to, these things don't hit you as hard as they do other people. You know, you are well aware that you know how to do stuff to help you along. So, you know, it might be something to think about, you guys. Think about, about doing a little garden. And, you know, maybe now with all of this going on, you'll have little community gardens pop up in your areas. And if you do, we can, you know, do it. Do your little community gardens, but start somewhere so that you can be at least a little bit of self-sufficient through all these uh, uneasy times. But don't worry, guys. We're all going to be fine. Everything's going to work out well, and uh, don't let life, you know, uh, don't let this disrupt your lives too, too much. You know, take advantage of the great time that you have at home and, you know, be with your kids and, you know, rest and read and all that good stuff. I still have my little arrow garden going over here, same as always. And in there, I got spaghetti sauce in the crock pot. So, you know, it's kind of like another, another day in the life of Mary, really, basically. So you guys, I hope you like this video. I hope you got some great ideas about gardening. Um, check out, you know, the the websites and the, um, you know, the, there's a lot of, uh, you know, the USDA has a great website that you can see what your your growing zone is, and you can buy seeds accordingly and, and figure out what you can grow in your area and, you know, things like that. Your universities a lot of times have extension offices, cooperative extension offices where. They, a lot of times they give free classes on how to make raised beds or how to how to grow and how to compost and things like that and they're free or very little money um you know check out all those things those are you real know, really great resources cornell university i think has a lot on their website about um well there's a lot of universities that do actually um so you make use of your resources there's all kinds of stuff out there start saving seeds you know if you buy a melon at the grocery store save the seeds and uh, see if you can grow some on your windowsill. You know, those, it's going to be fun. This year, I'm trying to get some heirloom seeds and organic seeds so that I can do that too. I've never done that before and I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. So like I said, guys, I hope that you found this um, video helpful and I hope you follow along with me because I cannot wait to see my garden this year, you guys. I can't. Oh my God, I can't even. It's going to be so much fun. So um, uh, keep your eye peeled on my, my YouTube channel because I'm going to have a lot of growing tips on there this year. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining in and watching my video today. And uh, uh, please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.